space look like? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, you know, space itself is a vacuum, uh, that which is uh, the definition of nothing, uh, which is uh, why we can float through it without uh, slowing down. Uh, and so it depends on which way you look. Look towards the Earth, of course, we see the beautiful sky and the beautiful Earth, but when we look away from the Earth, we see a very black sky and the stars and planets. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Srijit. Let us say that if you put a tiny ball of tin in a glass of water, when it rises, it, where does it end up? Does the material or the size matter in this question? Jan, could you repeat that? Yes. When, when you have a tiny ball in a glass of water, when you put this ball in the glass of water, does it rise or does it stay in the center of the ball of water? Does the material or the size matter in this question? Ah, yes, okay, yes, exactly, I understand now. And, uh, yeah, that's a very interesting thing, too, since uh, there is no up and there is no down here. Uh, when you put things even of different masses uh, together, they'll all just stay intermingled. So if you shake them up and mix the bubbles or mix the ball in with the water, for example, and uh, when you let go or when you stop, they'll stay mixed. Hi, I'm Gabriella. On land, you can't hold water. It would dribble down through your fingers. My question is, in space, can you hold or morph water? How and why? Ah, uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, when you put the water in your hand here in space, it sticks to your hand. It won't go, uh, it won't fall off your hand towards the ground because, of course, there's no down. But what it does do is it tends to coat your whole hand, so uh, uh, it's, uh, it still makes a mess when you get it on your hand. Hi, my name is Ashley. What if you what if you run out of oxygen? How and where do you store extra? Hey, Ashley, we uh, have a machine behind us that uh, uh, splits up water. Water is made out of hydrogen and oxygen, and it generates oxygen for us to breathe. And uh, we have two or three other sources of oxygen on board too. But if for some reason we began to run out of oxygen. There would be plenty of time for us to get back in our spaceships and return to the Earth. This was Renisa's question. What are the exact degrees of the sun? Oh, the temperature of the sun, uh, I don't remember the uh, precise temperature, but it's very, very hot. And in fact, uh, up here in space, uh, you can feel the rays uh, very intently. And, in fact, if you sit at some of the windows that are not protected, you have to uh, be very careful to wear ultraviolet protection or it will hurt your eyes and skin. Thank, thank you so much, Richard. Um, not only have uh, the students here asked the questions, but students across the country and around the world have been able to participate at our challenger.org. Um, students uh, that NASA has uh, introduced to this event are Challenger Learning Center students, and they represent uh, states from Florida to California, and Maine all the way to Alaska, across the sea to Hawaii, and Seoul, South Korea. So this truly international live video conference has been a tremendous opportunity for students all around the world. Thank you, Richard Garriott, for being our teacher from the International Space Station. Well, thank you, June, for always being my teacher, and I really appreciate it, too. <laughs> Have fun. Thank you, and I'll be back and share stories with you uh, when I get very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>
So we see lots of sunrises and lots of sunsets, and it happens very quickly. As soon as the sun starts to go down, within a minute or two, we're in the nighttime. Why does the Earth spin anyway? Well, that just has to do when it was uh, originally formed, as all the matter uh, coalesced. Uh, there happened to be some angular momentum in that matter, and it started it spinning, and it's just never stopped. This gentleman here. You said to get oxygen, you split your water. Do you have a limited supply of water? Uh, we uh, we bring up water on the spaceships we come up with and also on the progress. That's great. Right here in the middle. Do you float when you sleep? Yes, you do. In fact, uh, you have to strap yourself uh, in a sleeping bag to a wall somewhere. You might wake up somewhere entirely different than you went to sleep. <laughs> yes. What do you like most about being in space? Well, uh, I would, there's two things, the view and being able to fly like Superman. Yes, right here in the front. Do you have any trouble breathing in space? No, breathing's actually pretty easy other than the fact that uh, you have this uh, space adaptation sickness which makes you feel like you've got a head cold. Yes. When you, when you launched and you went through the atmosphere, what did it feel like? Oh, that was really amazing. Uh, the Soyuz, when it launched, slowly accelerated up until we got about four Gs, or four times the force of gravity. It stayed that way for about eight minutes, and then when the engines cut off, we were in space. Yes. What type of food are you allowed to eat in space? Well, uh, we have actually quite a variety of food up here, but it's all either um, freeze-dried or uh, pre-packaged uh, like a TV dinner. And so uh, it's, uh, it's not fine dining, but it's still uh, very good. When you first got ready to go into space or first got into space, did you get motion sickness? Um, I, in my preparations, I didn't really get sick, um, but about six minutes after you arrive in orbit, you can feel the fluids shift out of your lower body into your upper body, and uh, then you begin to feel like you got a bit of a head cold. So I've had, uh, the first four days, I had headaches. Yes, in the back. When you were playing football in space, was it slower than it is here on Earth? Well, we had to slow down or else we would bang our heads on the far wall because once you try to jump or move very quickly, you end up on the far side uh, faster than you expect. Right here, yes. How does electricity work in space? Actually, electricity works uh, just fine. In fact, uh, we collect solar power here with the solar panel arrays store that power in batteries and use that to run all the lights and all the experiments and all the computers on board. Right here. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to get from the Earth into space? It took almost exactly eight minutes, which is not very long, but it was accelerating very quickly on that rocket. your favorite food that you've eaten so far in space? Oh, that's a toughie. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things I love on the ground is macaroni and cheese, and I just found macaroni and cheese today for lunch, so I was very happy about that. Well, I think we all love macaroni and cheese here down on Earth. We want to thank you, Richard, for spending your time with us. We're so happy we could be your education partner here on the ground. Thank you from all the kids. Thank you, Rita.